Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. So may I introduce to you the actuator that's going to run my three-point hitch. This is, I got this off of eBay, uh, obviously made in China, but it's not that obvious, I guess, but I'm telling you it's made in China. This is a four-inch travel, 12-volt linear actuator. It says it has a 6,000 Newton push and a 4,000 Newton pull. 6,000 Newtons is 1,350 pounds, and 4,000 Newtons is less than that. It has a uh, speed of 4.5 millimeters per second, which is obviously fairly slow, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And I'll explain why here in a minute. This is a... Uh, this isn't the highest quality of actuator, let's put it that way. Uh, so we got like a little motor right there. It's nice and quiet. It's only five amps, so it's a, just a small motor. This this whole gearbox assembly, I'm guessing that there's a worm gear in here, and then that worm gear just directly acts on a, on a uh, gear that has a ball screw in it or something. And that's how this thing works. But this whole gearbox is just printed uh, 3D plastic. And then this back here is all aluminum. And then these three screws, uh, they just screw straight into the plastic, I'm guessing. I haven't had it apart. And, there, I mean, there could be some metal inserts to give it a little bit more rigidity. But ultimately, it's screwing straight into the plastic. So while it might be able to push 1,350 pounds, um, not to, uh, I won't hold it against it if it can't pull 4,000 newtons, whatever that is, let's call that, let's call that 800 pounds. I won't hold it against it if it can't pull that much, because it's just pulling four screws on, on printed plastic. So uh, the only time that this should ever be pulling is when, if I've got a tiller on the back of it, and I'm just trying to hold that tiller in the ground, this would pull. If I have like a, um, uh, a blade, back there and doing some grading or something it would need to hold and then uh, um, if I had like one of those uh, mm, spades or whatever they are I don't know to turn the soil one of those that this would be holding that down so it's possible that some shock loads could come through this and potentially rip these screws out maybe that'll happen maybe that won't happen maybe I won't ever use any of those implements <laughs> uh, but you know there it is so it's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I think I only gave us like 50 or 60 bucks for it. So, I mean, if nothing else, I can just get another one and have a spare. Uh, but uh, this will primarily be used for lifting stuff. Uh, I don't even know what stuff I'll be lifting with it, to be honest. Um, it's really just there for looks, if I'm honest. Let's just be honest. It's there for looks. So, anyway, that's what the actuator looks like out of the machine. Uh, give me a minute, I'll go put it in the machine. Okay, so here it is all installed. Motor is down there on the bottom. That's the business end up there. So I made this little bracket. That little bracket, um, I did this in a couple ways. And, um, I kind of screwed up the way I was going to do it the first time and then realized that that was stupid. I was going to put some, um, spacer blocks on either side of this. Uh, that arm that's between the long arm there and the uh, black um, collar. I'm going to put some spacers on that so that it would be the correct width to uh, just slide over the end of that uh, actuator rod. But I ended up putting spacers that are too wide and had to cut those things off. And then it occurred to me, I was like, well, hey, dummy, why don't you just get a piece of quarter inch that's the same width as that arm and bend it uh, to 90s and then that'll be your little... That'll connect to your actuator. So that's what I did. It's much, much easier. <laughs> and it's adjustable too. I've just got it tacked on there at that, at that end right now. And if I need to scoot it in any direction, then I certainly can. Um, in fact, I did. At first I had it centered. And then I realized that if I put it centered, then I won't have room for uh, that piece. That is my mock-up, which, uh, you know, as always, make one out of cardboard first. Uh, just made a little three, three quarter inch hole and put that piece on the top there made this piece to fit down on the bottom it was all oversized of course 
then taped them together, pulled it out, and then cut it to shape. And then took and transferred that to a piece of 16 gauge, piece of sheet metal, and then put it up here for actual fitment. And that's what we're sitting now. Now I'm gonna, um, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm probably gonna I'm gonna make that out of at least three eighths, at least three eighths plate, maybe even half. And I'll put some bushings in the end of it because what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have this piece, all of this, will uh, I'll put some set screws in here and then just have it fastened to the rod here. Then whenever the actuator pushes on this part, it'll be welded to this part. Then all this whole assembly will just uh, turn this chrome rod and that chrome rod will ride inside the bushings. The alternate way of doing it is uh, putting the bushings inside of this and fixing the chrome rod, but I think I'm going to do it uh, the other way because these this has got a three quarter inch hole and so does this, and I'd have to make those all I think an inch hole to put bushings in it. So I'm going to do it this way first, and if it turns out that that doesn't work, then I can always do it the other way. But anyway, so there is the uh, actuator in place. Let's see how it works. So like I said, this is a four inch stroke actuator and uh, it's on a four inch arm. Then that four inch arm is gonna go out to these, which will end up being either 11 or 13 inches long. Then those will, uh, I'll put a bend in here, it'll bend over here and it'll come back straight and it'll go into that one. It'll bend here, go back straight and go into the other one. And then they will raise and lower these arms here, which have another seven inches or so to the end. So if you take that four inches and then you um, put it out, whatever it is, 11 inches plus another four, uh, it's 15. So you're looking at about a four to one ratio. So when that moves four inches, uh, this is going to move 16 inches up and down. If that's moving four and a half millimeters per second. It's going to move four and a half times 4.5 so 18 and a half 18 millimeters per second is that right yeah 18 millimeters per second anyway it's uh it's going to be a lot faster once it gets out here now it's 1350 pounds of force so it's going to be one fourth of that over here so that's going to be uh what 36 360 pounds so it should be able to raise 360 pounds uh at the eyes there which is plenty i'm not going to be lifting bush hogs or anything like that uh you know the worst case i'm going to pick up the the tongue of a you know a tandem axle trailer um you know or a, a tiller or something like that so it's not going to be uh, picking up anything huge and heavy so that's how that is now one issue that i'm going to have i'm definitely going to have this issue and I, and I won't know how the issue resolves until i actually do it is that once this plate's installed permanently, and I got another one on this side, these these uh, mm, spacers won't be there. I think I'm just gonna have it straight up against, so this this uh, plate is gonna have a bushing in there with a shoulder on it, and then that shoulder will ride just directly against this. So I'll just have them in there kind of tight, and these uh, these won't be there. So they'll be, you know, about right here. My issue is gonna be, will I be able to get this actuator out? <laughs> and uh, my answer I th is, I think I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to. The one way I might be able to do it is if I take this, you know, remember this is gonna be a lot shorter, but if I take this part off, if I take the rod out, take this part off, then there'll just be these two sitting here and I might be able to rotate this up and then pull the motor out and then maybe twist it and turn it, finagle it somehow. But I won't actually know until I install it. And worst case, what I'll end up having to do is I'll have to come down and undo that top plate on the transmission. And that'd be a bummer if I had to do that. But, you know, that's what I got to do. That's what I got to do. But it's going to be a difficult to service part, that's for sure. Uh, I don't think I can go the other way. I don't think I can go out the middle. There is some room up here, but I don't think there's enough to, to come out that way. And then down here, this is just a little a little bracket, just a little triangle-shaped bracket, and then that welds to a little piece that goes across. 
and uh, so it's welded in front and back there, so it'll be nice and solid. But that's how we got her, and uh, still some work to do. I don't have a, a way of drilling holes, the holes big enough. Like I said, I think I'm going to need a one inch hole up here so I can put the bushings in it. And I'd like to get a little bit more precise measurements because the distance from the center line of that down to the bottom is kind of critical. Now I can get it um, just by drilling it. So you drill those holes first, put the bushings in, and then uh, then you well you drill those holes first and then put the template over this and cut the cut the lines a little bit uh, fat of the lines. Do both of those, put them together. And then clamp them or weld them together, and then you can uh, trim the trim the outside dimension so it looks good. But uh, in that way, you'll you'll have it. But I can't drill those holes that big, so I'll when I get to work, I'll you know I'll do that at work after work or something. So that's uh, what it is now, and I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's going to work really good. And uh, yeah, all right. Thanks for watching.